Tom shakes Ruby gently by the shoulder. You okay? You just sort of blanked out on me for a moment there. Ask Tom to walk to the other side of the room. She thinks she sees something. There's no way I'm doing that. I don't want to fall into that gap. Don't worry, you must not have noticed it. I understand. You obviously haven't been here for a while. Ask Tom what has happened at the time she has been gone. Well, I'm not sick anymore. I took an antidote three days ago. I haven't seen much either since I was locked in a room. But I've been hearing creaking and cracking noises echoing from other rooms. Tell Tom to show you where he was locked up. Sure. Tom agrees and leads Ruby up the access hatch. That's funny. This door was just open. Examine the bin, the place where her locker used to be, and close the Z-hatch with the computer. Look down the shaft where he pushed the barrel through, then look at that blobby thing. There's a utilitarian metal hamper here. Something is inside. Ruby decides to get it. One moment. There's a pit in the center of the room, spattered with dried blood. Sitting in the center is a scrap of paper. Ruby will pick that up in a second, too. The hatch in the southeast corner has a ladder, and looking down it appears to lead into the cell room below. Something about that fact seems odd. The corner has some sort of strange, smooth, organic growth, latched onto the two walls in the floor. It looks almost like skin. Ruby picks up a scrap of paper from the shallow pit. Ruby finds a footy sock pajama foot in the hamper evidently torn from a full set of pajama bottoms, and tied off at the ankle. It's slightly heavy. Untie the footy pajama. Dump out possible contents with care. Inside the footy sock pajama foot, there is a black and white key. Ruby throws away the footy sock pajama foot. Her genre instinct tells her she won't need it. Examine the growth more closely, too. Is it full or hollow? Fleshy or what? It's smooth and fleshy. It's like skin. Crawl down the southeastern hatch, if it looks like we can do it without falling. The second hatch now has a ladder leading down. That wasn't there before. Ruby descends the access hatch and enters the room below. Pull the lever. Ruby tries to pull the lever, but something's locking it from moving. It looks like part of the mechanism is missing, like a thin metal rod. About the size of a toothpick. Ruby ties a small bit of string to the lever, then climbs back up to the room where she first awoke. Tom is still here, looking the door over in confusion. Ask how Tom is doing. Ask him how his eye is feeling. My eye still hurts. Or rather, it hurts where it's supposed to be. I lost it while I was being dragged off to the room I spent the last few days in. You must not have noticed... You know, between your flashes and distractions. Ask Tom to describe the thing that brought him there, if he remembers. I didn't get a good look at whatever dragged me away. I was already sick, but most of the pain in my eye is gone now. Poor Tom's lost his eye. Ruby hugs him in comfort. Tom looks like he feels better. Ruby tells Tom what happened. Tom explains he's been feeling weak and despondent lately, and... Unfortunately, can't help her with that many details. Except that the western door in the room with the big console, the one that the fish tank door leads to, is the way to the room he was trapped in. They both agree that the only thing to do now is to go forward. Explore what was once the Z-hatch. Tom and Ruby both go back down the access hatch to check on the Z-hatch. Also, there's a hook on the ground here, but it's not sharp, and it's riveted firmly to the ground. It's essentially just a heavy-duty eye hook. Examine the symbol now above the Z-hatch. Ruby has a feeling she's seen this somewhere before. Examine the black panel thingy, then go through the hatch if the panel isn't interesting. It's some sort of movable wall panel, but it won't budge. It must be remotely controlled. Ruby and Tom both head through the Z-hatch. Ruby and Tom emerge in the back room. In a small closet to the east on a shelf, there is a large metal safe. Instead of a combination lock, it has a spherical indentation about as big as Ruby's fist. Like a socket. The room is also quite clean. See what is around the safe slash shelves. Examine the bulb, then examine the lock more closely. The shelves are bare. The light bulb is on, looking unremarkable and harsh. 
The lock is simply a spherical indentation. There's nothing more significant about the socket to speak of. That's all there is to it. Use the key on the safe? Ruby uses the black and white key on the wall cabinet. Inside the wall cabinet, Ruby finds another paper scrap. She also discovers an old-fashioned black leather medicine bag. Inspect medicine bag. Ruby can't open the medicine bag. There's a tiny padlock of surprising strength keeping it closed. Go east. Bring Tom. Ruby heads west. Remember, the view was reversed on entering the back room. And now that the hatch is much larger, she is able to take Tom with her to the other side behind the couch. Ask Tom to put his hand in the water tank. Press the button on it. Considering it's a giant blender, Ruby decides not to ask Tom to put his hand inside. Examine room. The window between the two rooms is now sealed with a heavy plastic. Perhaps to avoid breaking. The electrical panel has been covered up by a protective plate and marked with a symbol for electricity. There's an electrical outlet visible here. What's up with that hatch? Also, is there anything on the floor? The mail slot style drawer between the rooms which Ruby has used before is now empty. It's also clean. Check the floor for scuff marks, footprints, etc. Ruby heard you the first time. There's nothing it yielded worth noting. So no, nothing. Examine the three thingy. The symbol looks familiar. Ruby remembers seeing that one too. Head back to the dummy room with Tom. Ruby and Tom head back to the nail bisected room, and then the dummy room. Huh? As soon as Ruby re-enters the bisected room, the Z-hatch inexplicably slams shut. Tom is sealed on the opposite side of the wall from Ruby. Again? This is getting kinda old. Go to console upstairs and enter open Z-hatch 211. Ruby returns upstairs. The person behind the door tosses a small, thin metal rod onto the floor. The door closes suddenly. Ruby recovers the thin metal rod. Check on Tom. Ruby can't check on Tom. He's sealed behind the Z-hatch, and the terminal isn't working. It won't even light up. Well, go back to the lever slash handle thing, put the rod back in place, and give the fucker a tug. Ruby climbs down and replaces the metal rod into the lever. Ruby pulls the lever up, only to find it has far more slack than she realized. Something in the room moves in response to the pulling of the lever, but Ruby can't really see it from here. Ruby releases the lever, and it snaps back up, or down, into place. Something in the room moves again. Pull it tight and tie it to one of the rungs of the ladder with the string. The thick cord easily snaps the flimsy string. Find out how much slack the lever has. Climb the ladder while pulling it. Also, push the second button from the top. Ruby attempts to press the second button from the top, but it's been mashed in and broken. It looks like someone struck it hard with something, or else they don't know their own finger strength. Ruby heads upstairs. There sure is a lot of slack here. If there's still slack, head back down to side of room with the eye hook and attach lever to eye hook. Ruby hooks the lever onto the eye hook. Ruby retrieves the crowbar. Pry open the Z-hatch to try and save Tom. The thick metal shutters on the Z-hatch are way too strong for Ruby to pry open. Smash open the little metal lock with the crowbar. The lock is surprisingly resilient. But Ruby knew this already. Maybe it's not so surprising. Use crowbar on the boarded up hole. Delicious plank pulling action. Ruby rapidly returns to the boarded up hole, but she's not strong enough to pry the boards free. Her girlish figure is just not up to the task. She very rapidly returns to the other side. How considerate of her. Go to room to the left. Ruby heads west. Ruby enters the dummy room. Try to remove rope from dummy. Ruby tried before. She just can't manage it. Inspect new plaque under the trauma part of the wall. There is some sort of large black and white painting on the wall. Beneath it, there's a plaque in a language Ruby cannot understand. Check the thing under the mail slot. It appears to be a button diagram. 
similar to the one that was upstairs in the control room. It seems to have a different layout. Perhaps it coincides with the one in the other room somehow. Use crowbar on jammed filing cabinet. Luckily, the cabinet is not jammed very hard, and the crowbar makes short work of it. Inside, Ruby finds a tiny key. Tiny key on tiny padlock. Go. Ruby unlocks it with a tiny key, and recovers a paper scrap and a very sharp scalpel. Try checking the deposit box again. The deposit box is still empty. Check the clock on the wall. Nothing has changed. Try the sink. The faucet still doesn't work. There's no water at all. Use scalpel on biological growth in the locker room. There will probably be a way to turn on power to the console and open the Z-hatch. Ruby returns to the locker room. Ruby does her best to carve away at the fleshy growth and uncovers the cubbyhole behind it. She finds an eyeball, which, though strangely oversized, is not nearly as big as Ruby's fist. It wouldn't fit in the spherical safe lock. Uncomfortably, Ruby picks up the eye and stores it away. Ruby cleverly condenses her inventory. Examine the panel on the wall next to the closed doorway. It's a four-digit password panel. Above it is a diagram of a happy fish. It appears to be powered down at the moment. Attached to it is an extendable power cord. Get pulling and let's see how far this sucker goes. Ruby pulls the cord to the furthest location she can walk to. Looks like there's plenty of slack. Tom arrives on the other side of the thick window. Try to pass the cable through the mail slot. That would never work. The mail slot is specifically designed to only open to one side of the wall at a time. Send the eye to Tom and try to ask if it's his. For no real reason. That's terrible. Even if the eye was his, it's past the point where it could be reattached, even if there were proper medical facilities available. Ruby is not so cruel as to do that to Tom for no reason. Smash the window with the crowbar. The thick window is made of some sort of very resilient plexiglass. It refuses to give. Use the crowbar on the do not open box. The box is sealed tight. Ruby's girlish figure isn't enough to force the do not open box open. Ask Tom if he has anything in his pockets. Sadly, this time Tom is carrying nothing. No tap, no can opener, no condoms. Send Tom the crowbar and see if he and his manly physique can open the grate to the Z-hatch. Ruby sends the crowbar to Tom through the drop slot. Yeah! Tom receives the crowbar. With this weapon of potential destruction, Tom feels his manliness surging back. His manly physique is at its peak. He poses triumphantly to celebrate. Tom feels like he could do some serious bashing here. At least to most things that aren't specifically designed to stand up to bashing. Tell Tom to inspect the eye in the Z room closely. We haven't looked at it yet. It's just a painting. Tom doesn't see anything particularly destroyable about it. The Z hatch appears open. Huh? What are you talking about? It's obviously closed. Stop getting Tom's hopes up. Pry off the lightning bolt panel. Tom would rather not be electrocuted by prying off the high voltage panel in the other room. Then destroy the bank teller shelf. It's the only thing that allows Tom and Ruby to pass items. They may need it. Something needs to be smashed, dammit. Take out them shelves in the closet. Mind the light. Fuck yeah! Tom goes to work smashing up the shelves for no good reason, and carefully avoids breaking the light bulb. Then he decides what the heck and smashes the light bulb anyway. It's very satisfying. Now smash the sofa! Tom's anti-inanimate object bloodlust has subsided. Besides, the couch is so utilitarian, nothing about smashing it would probably be any fun. Back to the task at hand, then. Pry open Z-hatch? The Z-hatch is so strong it severed that monster in half earlier. Tom's efforts would be wasted against its thick steel shutters. But, but his manly physique! All right, then. Pry shut off the walls, starting with that painting. See if there's anything interesting hidden. We could try bashing that air vent open. 
You guys are really reaching. The painting won't come off. It's set into the wall. Can Tom pry open the vent? No. Okay, but can he bash the vent? No! I'm sure Tom heard you the first time. Gosh, I mean, jeez! Dig into the walls around the painting. We must have that frame. This is stupid. No, smash it! See what happens. This is also stupid. Go for the air vent! How many times do I have to say no? First have Ruby spin the dummy a bit. I already said like ten times that... Ugh. I give up. Switch back to Ruby. Go back to the set of buttons alongside the ladder near the lever. Ruby decides to get off her fluffy white butt and goes to the buttons again. Which button should Ruby press? Think carefully. Pressing random buttons may not be wise. Ruby is pretty sure she remembers seeing a diagram earlier. Top one. Are you sure? Okay. But don't say you weren't warned. Ruby presses the top button. Ruby hears soft, distant sounds of running water. Nothing else seems to happen. Press button four. Ruby taps button four. There is a loud rumbling sound from somewhere in another room, but otherwise no visible change. Ruby decides to check on Tom. Are you okay? Yeah, but there's a weird clanking sound nearby. Like something moving around on metal. I pressed some buttons a while back. Do you think that's why? I don't know. But a minute or two ago, something started making noise from that pipe overhead. Every 30 seconds or so, a clanking, clattering sound echoes through the pipes. Like something's passing through there. You're gonna hate me for this, but try breaking open the pipe and seeing what it is. The pipes here are shielded with thick metal plates. Tom wisely moves to the back room, where the pipe is exposed. Tom lets fly with a crowbar and assaults the old pipe. For better or for worse, the pipe is smashed open. Just in time. The rumbling sand is coming this way again. A perfect glass sphere comes tumbling down the shaft and lands softly, unharmed on the soft yet utilitarian couch. Take the sphere. Sphere into socket. Tom doesn't quite know what you're trying to say. Do you want him to... Unlock the safe with the glass sphere? Well, gee, why didn't you just come out and say that? <coughs> Tom unlocks the safe using the glass sphere and the safe lock socket. Inside the safe, Tom finds some sort of peculiar wooden disc. Go back into the tech room, put the disc into the mail slot, and send it to Ruby. Huh? Tom passes the strange disc to Ruby, who looks a bit startled to see it. Ruby sets the wooden disc onto the peg in the clock-like device. It fits perfectly. To which symbol should Ruby point the disc? The top one. Ruby points the dial disc to the top symbol. The sound of sliding metal comes from nearby. Just as Ruby had hoped, the symbol must have opened the Z-hatch. Tom enters the room, looking pleased to see Ruby. He carries the extendable power cord Ruby must have forgotten the other room. Hug Tom. Ruby hugs Tom. Mm -hmm. Tom goes a step further. It was at this point that Ruby realized that Tom is the one, and she threw herself at him, kissing passionately. <laughs> nice try. Turn the dial to the bottom. Ruby returns to the clock. She turns the dial away from the top symbol, and she can hear the Z-hatch slam down again. Ruby turns the dial to the bottom symbol. A faint sound of sliding metal can be heard through the plexiglass. Turn dial back to the top. Go to the other side. Leave Tom behind. Ask Tom to turn the dial to the bottom again. Ruby uses the dial to open the Z-hatch, and heads toward the room on the other side of the glass. Ruby's head... is killing her. <laughs> Ah! Ruby wipes the blood off her forehead. Tom didn't see. Knock on the glass. Press your hand against it. Show him that you're not well. No. Tom can't know. 